Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you. Hear the prayers of your servants and guide us in the way of justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with us. And good morning to you all, my sisters and brothers. Good morning. And a happy Independence Day to you all. Today we gather to thank God for America. We gather to thank God for its people and its nation. We gather to thank God for every blessing. And we offer this Mass for all who are members and citizens of this great country. We pray that the values of which this country uh, was instituted, the values of justice and peace and freedom, that that values will be held and uplifted each and every day of our lives. We pray for all our friends and families who at this time are struggling. We pray in a special way for those who are still battling this coronavirus. And we also remember, in a special way, all Americans, 130,000 Americans who have died as a result of this virus. Let us pray at this Mass that God will continue to welcome them into eternal life. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery worldly, let us call to mind our sins and be truly sorry for them. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Father of all nations and ages, we recall the day when our country claimed its place among the family of nations. For what has been achieved, we give you thanks. For the works that still remain, we ask your help. And as you have called us from many peoples to be one nation, grant that under your providence, our country may share your blessings with all the peoples of the earth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says he who is high and exalted, living eternally whose name is the Holy One. On high I dwell, and in holiness, and with the crushed and dejected in spirit. To revive the spirits of the dejected, to revive the hearts of the crushed. I will not accuse forever, nor always be angry. For their spirits would faint before me, the souls that I have made. Because of their wicked avarice, I was angry, and struck them, hiding myself in wrath, as they went their own rebellious way. I saw their ways, but I will heal them and lead them. I will give them comfort to them and to those who mourn for them. I, the creator, who gave them life. Peace, peace to the far and the near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed in his salvation to those who fear him glory dwelling in our land. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall, bring, truth shall spring out on the earth 
and justice shall look down from heaven. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that suppresses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Peace I leave with you, says the Lord. My peace I give to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciple, Jude, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. Yet, the word that you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace, I live with you. My peace, I give to you. 
Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens. So that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. And once again, I wish all of you uh, a happy Independence Day on this great day the Lord has made. And to thank God for the gift that is America itself. Yes, America is a gift. America is indeed a beautiful country. It is, I believe, God's own country. But yet, sometimes we have not lived up to expectations. We have not lived up to that billing of God's own country. Now, it doesn't mean America is the only God's own country. But yet, every country created upon this earth are God's own country. But America has something special that many countries do not have. You know, those who are from the Louisiana region, you know, it's, America is like a gumbo. Those who make gumbo, you know, you put everything and all things in it. You can't go wrong in a gumbo, amen. So America is indeed that beautiful gumbo, that, that experiment that God made here on earth where people from all corners of the world can find a home. On this July 4th, we thank God for the gift that America had brought to the world, the gift of generosity, the gift of solidarity, the gift of union, the gift of peace that America has been. Now we know all that glitters sometimes is no gold, and often have we had that told. For many of us, a life has sold, and our outside is yet to behold. And so we know that things are not the way they're supposed to be. That's why this year's Independence Day, in my opinion, should be a little bit more somber. Should it be an Independence Day of reflection? A day we actually sit back, relax, and just reflect on what God has in stock for this nation. In my opinion, it's not a day for unnecessary gatherings. I mean, families can gather and barbecue and, you know, reflect and talk. But not the kind of gathering that we saw yesterday at Mount Rushmore. I believe it's not the kind of gathering that we think that we should be having at this time, especially when the clock is ticking and America would have lost 130,000 people due to coronavirus. The biggest in the world. It didn't even know it doesn't even come close. We are heading to almost 3 million people who have contracted this disease. That's those known. There is a lot of people who are asymptomatic, who may not even be known. There's a lot of race war going on. There have been a lot of protests. But this is not a time to glory in the past. It is a time to reflect in how the future should be shaped. It is a time for us to reflect on how we can truly, truly, as God's people, shape this future. So that our children, these little ones who look upon us, who look at us and look to the future, that they can have a future that they will be proud of. I think that's what today calls for. That's what this July 4th 
calls for. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that, you know, there will be no kinds of celebration. We should celebrate. But our celebration should be aimed at reminding ourselves that we are not the best versions of ourselves. I think that's what today calls for. We are not the best version of ourselves. We are not a country of peace. We are not a country where people are respected. All people are respected. No. We are not a country where everyone who wants food gets food. That's not who we are. We are not a country where everyone who wants medical care can get medical care easily. That's not a country that we are at this present time. Doesn't mean that we cannot be a country that we anticipate. It doesn't mean that the future cannot be better. But we're simply acknowledging that this America is not the best version of America that it should be. Especially these past couple of years. It's not the best version that we should be. Work needs to be done. And from both sides. You know? Both those who are conservatives and those who are liberal and those who are in the middle. All of us, all of us have a part to play in the current America that we see. And all of us have a part to play in the future America that we want to see. You know, I'll reflect a little bit on the second reading today, Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul writes, this is a beautiful letter to America, if you tell me, if you can ask me. This is a beautiful letter. Paul is writing to the Philippians, to America. Paul is saying to America today, you, my brothers and sisters, you who bleed the red, white, and blue, Paul is saying to all of us this morning, have no anxiety at all. Have no anxiety. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Amen, somebody. That's what Paul is saying to America. This is not a time for anxiety. This is not a time to be afraid. Rather, he's saying, when we pray, when we are making our petitions... Let's do it in thanksgiving. In other words, acknowledge the beauty that is America as well as acknowledge the broken part that is America. Broken as a result of hatred. Broken as a result of strife. Broken as a result of racism. Broken as a result of income inequality. Broken as a result of bad leadership. You know, sometimes when we hear bad leadership, you know, we're almost tempted to look at a third world country, right? Today, this America today is a great symbol of bad leadership. Beginning from the local authority all the way to the penthouse. A symbol of bad authority. That's why America is that part that has been broken. But it can be fixed. That's why Paul knew that it could be fixed. And he's writing us this letter today and saying, whatever we do, let us make our request known to God with thanksgiving. That's why the song we began with today is, I just want to praise you forever for all that you have done. For all that you have done. And blessings and glory and honor, they belong to you. They belong to you, Lord. So thank you, Jesus, for blessing us, for blessing America. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing us. Paul continued to say, if we do that, if we make our petitions known to God, then the peace of God, that peace that surpasses human understanding, amen. You know, I always tell you that peace is that gift that is given by God, right? We anticipate that peace and we walk towards that peace 
Paul is saying that peace that surpasses all human understanding. What is the human understanding? That people do not believe that white, black, Spanish, and Asian, and Africans, and everybody can come together, and Indians, and come together and live as one. That is the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Paul is saying, if we pray to God and offer our thanksgiving to him in our petitions, then that peace that surpasses human understanding, that peace that surpasses all knowledge, will guide your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And then he said, finally, finally, America, whatever is true, America, whatever is honorable, America, Whatever is just, America. Whatever is pure, America. Whatever is lovely, America. Whatever is gracious, America. If there's any excellence, America, and if there's anything worthy of praise, America, think about these things. That's the future. That's how we can feel and salvage this broken part. Whenever we think about things that are true, not things that are false. Whenever we think about things that are honorable, not things that dishonor us and dishonor God. Whenever we think about things that are just, justice for all people, especially black people and brown people, who feel like they're not part of this melting pot. Whatever is gracious, whatever we carry ourselves, grace is what? Unmerited gift of God. Whenever we think about the unmerited gift we have received from God, America, whenever there is any excellence, whenever we think of things that are excellent, not mediocrity, whenever... We think about the things that are worthy of praise, not worthy of being disavowed, disavowed and dis destroyed. Whenever we keep doing all of these things, we should keep them in our mind because that's how the future can be built. Little wonder Jesus said to Jude, his disciple today in the gospel, Jesus says, Whoever loves me will keep my word. What is the word of the Lord? The word that is true. The word that is honorable. The word that is just. The word that is pure. The word that is lovely. The word that is gracious. The word that is excellent and worthy of praise. That's the word of the Lord. So Jesus is not speaking to Jude alone, but he's speaking to America. He says, dear America, Whoever loves me will keep my word. And yes, my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. And Jesus concludes by saying to America today, do not let your hearts be afraid. Trust in me. Isn't that what we say? In God we trust. Trust Practice that word that you profess. In God we trust because God is the giver of peace. And unless we embrace the peace that he gives us, the peace that he leaves with us, not the peace that the world gives, because the way the world gives peace is by war, is by hatred, is by segregation. The way the world gives peace is by dividing people. It's by evil rhetorics, destructive rhetorics. But the way the peace of the Lord is given is by love. So, dear America, God says to you, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen.
Let us rise as we pray for America and its citizens and the people around the world. For this great country, America, let us pray that God's peace will rest upon it, the peace that he himself can give. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those citizens of America who feel disenfranchised, those who feel that they are not part of this country, those who feel left out, the poor, the minorities, the homeless, the abandoned veterans, and so many people. Let us pray that God will open the hearts of our leaders so that they can welcome and care for all people of this great nation, America. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that God will heal the divisions that exist among us, the division among color lines, the division among party lines, the division among religious lines, the division among social economic lines. Let us pray that God will give us the grace to walk towards equality and equity for all members of this great melting pot. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For all those who are still recovering from this deadly coronavirus, let us pray that God will send his healing hands upon them. And for our brothers and sisters, the 130,000 Americans who have lost their lives as a result of this virus, let us pray that God will welcome them into paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray for? On this day, let us call upon our mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Let us call upon the mother of our mother, the mother of America. Let us call upon her to intercede upon this great nation, to reclaim America as her own, and that America may reclaim her as her mother, so that she may continue to intercede for all peoples, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our bed. Amen. Good and kind God, you have given this great nation abundance of wealth, abundance of knowledge, an abundance of humanity. But sometimes we have misused and abused the gifts that you have given us. And so, Lord, on this Independence Day, give us the grace to value one another. Give us the grace to honor one another. Give us the grace to respect and love one another as you have loved us so that the peace that surpasses all understanding will be ours. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, Lord God, these gifts we bring to this altar, and having taught us through the wisdom of the gospel, lead us to true justice and last in peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your heart. Yeah, lift them up. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers as they fashioned a nation where we might live as one. His message lives in our midst as we are taxed for today as a promise for tomorrow. And so, with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our life to sing the glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I offer today the Eucharistic prayer, two of reconciliation. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the world that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command will fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, could you be given up for you? In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in a memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles, St. Luke and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship, bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to one another a bow of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word in my soul. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Together, let us pray the acts of spiritual communion. Our Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things, and we desire to receive you into our soul. Since we cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our heart. We embrace you as if you were already here and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Let us pray. By showing us in this Eucharist, O Lord, a glimpse of the unity and joy of your people in heaven, deepen our unity and intensify our joy that all who believe in you may walk together to build the city of lasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, I wish all of you a happy Independence Day, and I pray that you have a, a safe uh, July 4th, and as we say, may the 4th be with you, and may you continue to enjoy uh, the peace and the joy that God only can give. Amen. Amen. And be safe out there. Um, I recommend staying with your family only and not um, engaging in any crowd because this disease is indeed uh, serious. So continue to do your best, continue to wear your mask. Uh, when you are in a place where there's no space between you and anyone, please continue to do so. Don't pay uh, the president any mind. Don't pay him any mind. I I'm saying it. Yeah. You know, don't pay him any mind. He can have all his rallies with people not wearing masks, sitting literally in Able to able, even while 130,000 people are dying. That's a sign of um, not just ignorance. It is, it's a sign of insensitivity. So I pray that you will enjoy July 4th and enjoy it uh, peacefully and enjoy it with your family. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Father who has called us to be one human family, may he fill your hearts with deep longing for peace and harmony. Amen. Amen. May the Son of God, who came to share our life and make us children of the one Father, May he enable us to grow in wisdom and grace before God and the human family. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who is the bond of love between the Father and the Son, 
He unites in love all of you present here and those of you watching uh, through our live stream. And may he be the bond of love among you, among our nation and all peoples. Amen. And now may the blessings of the almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you both now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the ocean, white with foam.